YouTube, we are back with another deck update slash discussion for you all. And today we're going to be going over my updated Bloom Lord list. Um, I did upload a Bloom Lord profile earlier on in the channel, but the deck itself has evolved in many ways since I put that list together. Um, Bloom Lord, in my opinion, has truly just been a deck that's considered probably close to like the old faithful within the Digimon community. It's been a very solid and reliable deck in most recent metas, getting a lot of consistent results. And has even survived a couple of ban lists despite seeing pieces like Blossomon get hit. It's a really fun deck to play and a really strong one at that in my opinion. It utilizes more of a wide board style of play to really swarm your opponent until you can go for that lethal swing. Um, and it also throws in a lot of combo plays that helps you respond to what your opponent is doing and helps you know be a little bit more adaptable as well and not just focus on aggression. So I I've had a lot of fun testing this deck out. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. Let me know what you think. And as always, thank you guys for tuning in and showing your support. And without further ado, let's hop right into the deck profile. Alrighty guys, so let's start off with our eggs here. We're going to be running four of the EX3 uh, Kokomon and one of the BT2 Argomon. I'm running five eggs, not because you really need it, but mainly because I just feel like with how quickly I want to be able to like push my stacks out, I feel like I want that flexibility in case games do go a little longer and they do have the potential to go long with the way I tend to play the deck as well as, you know, with some of the matchups that we're going to be seeing nowadays with Yellow Vaccine, you know, Fenry Luga, even D Brigade at times can be a bit controlly as well. So I feel like having that fifth egg sometimes has a benefit to it. Both eggs synergize very, very well with the deck, so I don't think you really miss out on much um, in terms of value. So I think having the fifth egg is not bad. You know, Kokomon with the ability to let you just draw uh, when you suspend a Digimon by effect and then Argomon, you know, when you unsuspend during your main phase, you gain a memory. Both synergize very, very well. So I think both effects are nice and I just run the fifth egg just to have that security blanket. In terms of our rookies, we'll start off with three of the new BT14 Palmon. Uh, really nice in terms of some control aspect to it, right? Start of your main phase, you know, you can choose one of your opponent's Digimon and it gains the effect, you know, all turns. When suspended, you lose, the player loses to memory until the end of your opponent's next turn, which simulates Ice Wall to a degree, right? But the, I think the added benefit that this card has is it's not just a, oh, well, during your opponent's turn, you can utilize this to your benefit as well, right? If you choose one of your opponent's Digimon and suspend it via effect, whether it's via like a Hydramon or whether it's via Pomumon's effect, whatnot, you're able to gain the two memory there too to prolong your turn and keep your plays going. So I think it's nice in the sense that you can utilize it really anytime you want to, whether it's during your turn or during your opponent's turn to kind of give it that flexibility. So I really do like it for that effect. Um, and the inheritable of reducing the Digivolution cost by one, if you have a green tamer in play, can definitely come up and definitely can be huge in terms of memory efficiency. Um, next, we're gonna be running four of the BT-10 Palamon and four of the BT-13 Lalamon. These two are basically your principal searchers of the deck. BT-10 Palamon of note does search top four and lets you pick up one vegetation plant as well as one fairy. So you could potentially get two hits off of Palmon. So do keep that in mind. Whereas Lalamon, it's reveal top three, pick up vegetation plant or fairy. So it's gonna typically only be one hit or you can pick up a Yoshino on top of that. Spoiler alert, we're not running Yoshino. So we won't be getting the double hit off of Lalamon, but Lalamon still is a searcher, still pretty good. Three drop to cycle through is you know always good early game value the inheritable um to reduce digivolution cost by one if a green tamer is in play exactly like palmon also is really really good and to round out the rookies we're running two pomumon from ex3 this card is really really good if i could bump him up to like a three of i think i most definitely would um just because the ability to suspend one of your opponent's digimon when you suspend pomumon via an effect is so so good for like board control and um establishing your board presence right because board bloom lord has piercing can swing through your opponent's body by suspension so i think pomon has huge effect particularly in today's meta um like i said i definitely would think about bumping him up to three if i could 
Next, into our level 4s, we're going to be running 4 of the BT-10 Sunflomon. I think probably your best level 4 for the deck. Um, because on Digivolve, you can suspend one of your Digimon. It doesn't have to be itself. It can be any one of your Digimon on the field to play at a 3k DP or less body. Um, just really, really good for establishing that wide board presence. Um, I really like it going on top of stuff that you've already played out via other effects. So it doesn't necessarily gain value like right away, but I think as you start to chain your plays along and you start to establish a bit of a wider board, this can just help augment that by so, so much. Um, and the inheritable to draw one when one of your Digimon becomes suspended via effect is also not bad. Um, then we run four of the BT-13 Sunflomon. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't really proc the main phase off, mainly because I'm not running any level 5 fairies. Um, so, in essence, you could argue that it's a bit of a dead card in my deck, and I totally hear that. I really run it just for the inheritable, which is exactly the same as Palamon and Lalamon, which is reduce the Digivolution cost by 1 if you have a green tamer in play. So, I really do like this effect, and like I will tell you later on, I tend to build in the back first and then push up, which is why I don't mind seeing this guy and just digivolving Sunflow in the back and digivolving on top uh, with a level 5 just for the inheritable. Um, you could argue maybe cutting it down to 3 and sneaking in like a red Vegemon or 2 just for that cheap level 4 play, which I think is totally fair. But for now, I'm just running four of the Sunflow from BT-13 and rounding out with two Togemon from BT-14. Um, Togemon's really good, has the Inheritable that is exactly the same as Sunflowmon. So again, you see that reduced Digivolution Inheritable, which is so, so good for this deck. Um, and then during your turn, once per turn, when you play out a green Tamer, you can suspend one of your Digimon to reduce the Tamer cost or play cost by three. So... In essence, able to cheat out, you know, either a BT14 Mimi or reduce the play cost of a BT2 Mimi by one, which is really, really good. Um, but like I said, really good inheritable. It is under that 3k DP threshold as well, so you can sneak it out to just play out a level four via effect two. So I think very, very flexible card, and I like him at a two of. Like I said, you could definitely make an argument to maybe take away two of this Sunflowmon and run like two Red Vegemon, or cut down on one of my level fives and cut down on a Sunflowmon to play like a total of two Red Veggie. That's definitely something I'm thinking about. But for now, this is the build that's been working for me. Moving on to the level fives, we do run three Cherrymon from BT10. Um, Digizorbs to basically reduce this cost of Digivolution by two. Um, so if, for those who don't know, Digisorption basically means as you're declaring the Digivolve, you would choose to suspend one of your own Digimon, and then you can reduce the cost by whatever the Digisorb amount is. He's Digisorb 2. So by suspending either itself or another one of your Digimon, you reduce the Digivolution cost by 2, which is really, really good for just turboing up into your top end. Um, I also like his effect as a pseudo blocker. So if you have a suspended Digimon in play, you can choose to redirect one of your opponent's attacks to a susp suspended Digimon. So really does help in terms of defense and a little bit of, um, I guess like a slowing down mechanism to your opponent. Again, like it gets removed easily. It can be swung over pretty easily too, but it does have that pseudo layer protection, which can come up at times. Next, we're going to be running four Agitarmon from BT10. I think Agitar is like your foundation for setting your plays up. More often than not, I find myself digivolving into Agitar in the back, waiting for the right time to push up, and then stringing along my chain plays from there. So I really like Agitar as like a foundation. I view all the other level 5s in this deck as more of like a... Like you utilize them in the field. So like as you start to spew out bodies and establish your board presence, I would utilize the other level fives to kind of climb up into another top end. Whereas Agitar should be sitting in the back until you're ready to kind of push out and kind of start going, your, start with your plays again. Well, so, you know, to round out the level fives, we will run one Argomon, which is a Digizorb by three. So you can suspend one of your own Digimon to reduce the Digivolution cost by three. 
The inheritable is also not bad to help with your wide board mechanic to play out a suspended level three when attacking. It is not a once per turn, so for whatever reason, if you end up restanding, swinging multiple times, you know Argomon can just keep spewing out level threes, um, which is pretty pretty good in this deck. And then we round out the level fives with one of the limited Blossomon. Again, it's a generic Digizorp minus three. Doesn't have an inheritable, but Digizorp minus three to essentially go into a level five for free is so good. Um, and I can definitely see why it was limited. So as I said before, with the level fives, Agitar is like your foundation piece. And then Argo, Blossom, Cherry, you kind of utilize more so in the field to help turbo up into your level six. Which, speaking of, we're going to be starting our level 6 count with 3 Hydramon. Um, Hydramon is a really, really good card in my opinion. I think kind of fallen off the radar of most folks, um, just because the Rosemon support is pretty decent and pretty good. But in terms of just like Floodgate for the deck, I think Hydramon is extremely high value for what this deck wants to do. It has a lot of effects, so, you know, bear with me here. Basically, you know, when Digivolving, you can choose to suspend uh, one Digimon. Um, doesn't have to be like your own Digimon, doesn't have to be like your opponent's. You can choose, you know, one or the other. Um, and then all turns when an opponent's Digimon becomes suspended, for each other suspended Digimon, the Vegetation Planter Fairy, so not counting itself, keep that in mind, you gain a memory. So if you're wideboarding, which you are with this deck, you're gonna be gaining a lot of memory back with Hydra and with how efficient you can be with your Digivolution, whether it be through the training cards, your inheritables that we just talked about, you're really able to turbo into this guy for a really, really cheap cost. And then at the end of your turn, if you have two or more suspended Digimon with Vegetation Plant or Fairy in their traits, which with this deck is not very difficult to do, you can return one of your opponent's suspended Digimon to the bottom of its owner's deck. So really good removal mechanic there as well, in my opinion. Um, and keep in mind that all turns effect too, right? So if you have a live Hydramon on the board and your opponent decides to swing, if you have a wide board, you can basically say, look, like you've become suspended now. I'm going to gain memory and pass turn potentially, right? Or at least slow them down. Now, the argument against Hydra is that it's easily removed. It can be swung over and there's so many ways to DP reduce it now that it may not end up sticking on the board. So you've used a lot of your resources to really do nothing, which I think is a fair argument. But at the same time, if you think about it, right, your opponent has to commit those resources to doing that. And also with just how you can slow your opponent down one or two turns with how quick this deck is able to build right back up, you can essentially build right back up into another Hydra, go back into a Bloom and just close out the match, right? So I think slowing your opponent down even just by one or two turns can be very, very significant. Um, and then rounding out the level sixes, we do have Bloom Lord at a four of. Just really, really good card. Um, very good for any wide board deck. And I think just perfect for having a wide board and being able to swing for big amounts with piercing, multiple checks at a big number, I think just provides the aggression that you need with this deck. And then to round out the Digimon, we have two Quartzmon. Again, really, really good card. Um, you're going to be getting to it pretty quickly with how fast you can go into your level sixes. And on top of that, too, with how much you're wideboarding, you know, Quartz is going to become a lot more affordable and a lot more efficient to get into and really shuts your opponent down. So again, similar to Hydra, yes, it can be removed, but forcing your opponent to dedicate resources to getting rid of Quartz again gives you that extra turn or two to really do damage and sometimes quartz just needs that turn and then you can go for games so really really good card moving on to the tamers we run two of the new bt14 mimi i really like her in the early game being able to play her out for three cycle through their top three cards and have a way to set up more memory ramping is really really high value Sorry, we're not running two we're running three actually <laughs> my apologies uh, we're running three of the BT14 Mimi um, just because her memory manipulation is so, so good. Um, and I think early game Tamer, she's definitely the one you want to see. 
um, two of the original B uh, Mimi from BT1. Again, Memory Setter, which is invaluable for this deck. And then two, being able to push up your stacks, patch in the back, and have another um, stack ready to go next turn really helps with the tempo and the aggression of this deck, which is why I do like her over Yoshino, just because I think Mimi provides extra value with tempo and aggression. Um, just being, you know, it's scary for your opponent to have to deal with like a Bloom Lord that's swinging for like two, three checks, right? And then you're able to Digivolve in the back and you have like an Agitar set up ready to go for next turn too, right? Like it's, it's just so much tempo. Even if it's not an Agitar in like a level three or a level four, the fact that you're able to just spit out another body and go is huge, right? Um, in terms of options, we're running one HPD because HPD is just so good being able to reduce Digivolution costs by five for no cost at all and just by suspending one of your Digimon with how accessible the board is to that, absolutely busted. Um, and then we round out the deck with three of the agility training. Uh, really, really good again for early cycle, being able to reduce your Digivolution costs and you know, really dirty <laughs> when you go into like a Bloom Lord by a reduced Digivolution cost by like proccing um, the agility, right? Potentially proccing like one or two Mimis, and then you have the inheritables of say like Togemon and Palamon underneath to reduce the Digivolution cost by a total of two. So you're going to be like netting memory by going into Bloom Lord, which is absolutely insane in my opinion. Um, and that wraps up the deck, guys. So. Let me go into a quick discussion points about like how the deck wants to run, how to set up your plays, and what to watch out for like mid and late game so that you can sneak out that win. Um, and let's move on to that. Alrighty guys, so let's talk about some you know early game setup pieces, right? I think one of the biggest things that Bloom as a deck is really good at is cycling and spitting out your lower end bodies. This essentially plays into your win con as you use your lower end bodies to feed into your top end mechanics, whether it be Bloom or Hydra, to not just you know solely focus on aggression, but you're also able to sprinkle in aspects of board control as well. And this really presents itself in like a suffocating way where you're able to really just put your foot down on your opponent and say, look, like we're gonna just take control of the game state, right? You know, my typical strategy will be to use my first couple of turns to build and raising and throw out my searchers to look for my pieces. And I think the addition of the training cards to this deck is absolutely huge. Um, being able to throw, it, throw out a training card for two, cycle through some cards, pick up things that I need, I think is really, really nice. And then using the effect to reduce Digivolution cost, you know, makes this already memory efficient deck even more efficient. You know, in my opinion, it's okay to be a little bit patient because the goal is to typically, you know, as you push from raising, you want to make sure that you have all your pieces together to start pulling off your chain plays. You don't want to be too patient, you know, on the flip side, because if you're too patient and you dig yourself a deep hole to play out of, you know, Bloom does struggle in that sense where if there's a really, really big hole to climb out of, sometimes it just doesn't have that ability to respond. So you don't want to wait too long to have your opponent, in essence, put their stranglehold on the game state. You want to be able to kind of play that, you know, sort of nuanced balance between too patient and too aggressive, which really just comes with practice and knowing how the deck runs. Um, another thing I'll say is if you can get BT14 Mimi out early, I think that's pretty helpful. She does provide good cycle ability and she's able to help you again with your memory efficiency via her effect to gain a memory every time you suspend a digimon via effect i think that's really nice you know you're able to just string off your combo plays a lot more effectively so if you're able to put down a mimi and have like one or two trainings on board you're pretty much golden to really set your board up you know moving on to the mid to late game like i said i'll usually push up when i have things established i'll push up an agitar typically in the from the back into the battlefield when i'm pushing up i usually will have my top end in hand and a few of my lower level pieces to play out you know in terms of our level fives like i said before agitar is your very good foundation to start playing out your bodies and procking your effects 
The other level 5s in my opinion you utilize more so in the field to help string your plays along and get climb up and turbo into your top end. But I think Agitar as like a foundation is really really good and sort of your ideal level 5 to raise from your raising area. Um, this is also where I see the benefit to the original Mimi Tamer um, as opposed to some folks running Yoshino. Um, I like Mimi for that additional aggression. Um, the ability to hatch, once again, after you have a level 5 or higher in play, runs really, really well with the tempo of the deck. Um, you know, if you pair the training cards and how memory efficient some of the inheritables make this deck, I feel that Yoshino sort of loses some of her value. Not to say that she's not valuable, but at the same time, the deck does what she already does. And I think Mimi just helps your tempo out more so than Yoshino. You know, I think Yoshino is really, really good for decks like Rosemon, who kind of focus more so on building that big stack and using the effects that way. Whereas I feel like with Bloom, you're more focused on tempo and wideboarding. And I think Mimi definitely... Um, adds to that mantra more so than Yoshino. So that's why I'm opting for Mimi, um, just for the tempo. Um, now, after you've pushed up your Agitar, I think this is where things can get a little bit nutty. So I'm not really gonna go into a full play-by-play -play of this combo and how things play out, simply because if I do, this video can easily become like 35 to 40 minutes long, which I'm not really sure you all wanna hear me talk for that long. But basically, you know, by pushing your Agitar up, you can suspend it to play out a 3k DP or less body, which in turn, if you have the right pieces in hand, will allow you to do a couple of things. Ideally, what I would like to do is if I play out like say a Palmon off of Agitar's effect, I will try to go into BT10 Sunflowmon, which on Digivolving will allow me to suspend itself to play out another body. You know, and if you pair this card with training boosts and whatnot, if you're able to go into Sunflow for free, spit out another body, now you have three bodies on board, which pairs very, very nicely with what Agitar will like to do. If you have like a Lalamon or even like the new Palamon in that stack, what you can do is reduce your Digivolution cost of Bloom by potentially one or two, go into Bloom Lord which allows you to suspend that third body that you put out, gaining a memory off of Agitar's inheritable effect, and then gaining three memory off of Bloom Lord's effect, essentially making him now netting you a positive memory because you've reduced his Digivolution cost and then gained memory back. So you're netting memory going into your top end, unsuspending him, being able to swing for multiple checks, I think just presents really, really good value and also allows you to make him even stronger and bigger, right? Because by gaining that much memory and making your play so much more efficient, sometimes you can keep doing this and make your bloom even stronger and even more efficient because the wider you go, the scarier bloom gets as a top end. So I think you're able to do that so much more with the training boosts as well as some of the inheritables that can be strung along with it. Um, I think Pomumon is also a great card for board control. As you saw in my deck profile, I'm only running him at a 2 of. I think if I were to make changes, I would try to maybe bump him up to like a 3. I don't know if I would do a 4, but at least a 3 maybe. Just for that additional control aspect, you know, by suspending it, which if you choose to suspend him via Bloom's effect, you can suspend one of your opponent's Digimon. If Bloom is a big body, which most of the times it will be, you can swing through with piercing, which I think is just great for aggression and board control. I did also want to take some time to talk about Hydramon. I still think it's a very, very good card for this deck. I know some folks are saying, you know, let's cut it down to two or even take it out entirely in favor of like cards like the new Rosemon, for example. Um, but I, I'm sticking with Hydra just because I think it's very good in terms of what it wants to do and as a, as a floodgate for the deck. With how much you are wideboarding and how efficiently you can wideboard, I think Hydra's all turns effect will really slow your opponent down and prevent them from swinging multiple times. You know, decks like Fenrir Luga, D Brigade, um, they want to be swinging multiple times with low, like these low end bodies. 
And I think Hydra being able to just say, look, if you suspend, we're going to steal turn because we're going to gain memory off of its effect. I think just is really, really good. Can it be dealt with really easily? I mean, absolutely, right? I mean, a lot of things now can de-digivolve. A lot of things can swing through. A lot of things can just bottom deck. But, I mean, at the same time, right, you, you're forcing your opponent to commit to that and use their resources to get rid of it. If they can't get rid of Hydra, well, I mean, they're kind of stuck slowing down by a turn or two, right? And that gives you that extra time to look for your pieces, build another stack in the back, and really just, again, wideboard even more and really be suffocating to your opponent, which is why I decided to keep my Hydramon count to a three of. Like I said, I just think it's such a good floodgate for this deck, and I enjoy running it at a three of for that additional, like, control aspect. Um, and it definitely has helped me sneak out a few games here and there for sure. You know, pair Hydra with, say, like a Quartzmon, I think it's a really devastating combo. Um, some strengths and weaknesses to Bloom. Um, I think the biggest strength to Bloom Lord is tempo and the ability to wideboard. You know, you know, it, you blink and all of a sudden Bloom can put out three, four, sometimes five bodies, and your opponent is just forced to deal with it. You know, and that puts a lot of pressure on them to really push out, maybe sometimes too early, and make a play. A lot of these decks, maybe not so much D Brigade, but things like Fenry Luga, you know, OTK decks like Melga, Jessmon, whatnot that you'll be seeing, they kind of rely on the optimal play. Now, you don't really care about that, you know? Um, they kind of force them to say, look, I've got to move, otherwise I'm kind of in a bad spot. As I've harped on many times already, the memory efficiency of this deck is just absolutely insane. You know, I think the new support pieces like Mimi, the new Togemon, as well as the training cards really make this deck even more efficient, which is really, really scary. You know, I've had turns where, like I said, you go into Bloom Lord and you're gaining memory, right? And you're able to pull off even more crazy plays after that, um, just with how efficient this deck is. So I think it's a very, very strong deck. Um, here is my deck profile once again for those who want a quick image of it. Let me know what you guys think. Like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and hopefully this was a good update to my previous Bloom Lord video. Um, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we'll be uploading some more commentary later on this week as well as a couple more deck profiles. So be on the lookout for that and we'll catch you on the next one. Bye guys.